Hey there. In this video, we are looking at phase shift in sine and cosine functions, or in other words, horizontally shifting the basic sine and cosine graphs and seeing how that's connected with changes you make in the equation to cause that to happen. Now we're going to use one of our basic functions again here, y equals sine x, to investigate phase shift and trig functions. Now what you may or may not know is how you cause a horizontal translation to happen in any function. If you replace x with x plus or minus something, which we'll do here, y equals sine x minus We'll use a value involving pi here because our horizontal scale is in terms of pi, so it makes sense to, to use a value just to, to investigate here first. If we do that, if we think about it now, if this value, say this one right here, pi over 2 gives us 1. So we put pi over 2 in here, we get 1 here. If we want to still get the same 1 here, Think about what we have to put in here if the first thing we're going to do is subtract pi over 2 from it. We want this to be pi over 2 so that we get 1. So if we want this to be pi over 2, we actually need this to be bigger. We need it to be pi. So this point right here is actually going to move over to here when we look at this function. And similarly, this point right here. You put pi in here, you get 0. If we want to still get 0 here, we need to make this bigger by pi over 2. So we need to actually put in 3 pi over 2 because 3 pi over 2, take away 1 pi over 2, gives you 2 pi over 2, which is pi, which gives us 0. So that point is going to move over to there. So we'll look at the graph and we can confirm that that is in fact what happens. That point has gone there, just like we predicted. This point has gone here just like we predicted. And in fact, any point on that original curve has shifted pi over two units to the right. If we were to have made this plus pi over two, we'd find that it would shift the other way. Because when you're adding pi over two, you need the x values you're using to be smaller to compensate. So when you look at that graph, that point that was at the top there now has gone over here to zero. It's pi over two lower. This, this point that we saw that was at pi is now at pi over 2, and so on. Now, what we could actually do is put in a slider here. Usually, people use the, the variable c for that. Now, the reason that this is referred to as phase shift with trig functions is because they're repetitive. So you have this, this these repeating cycles. So if you shift it enough, it, it matches up with itself again, and it can just keep going. So it's if you just see the final picture, if you didn't see this number over here, it's hard to tell which way that thing is shifted. So what they refer to is just phase shift is where the highs and the lows are. If you've ever done any physics with work with waves, you might have talked about waves being in phase or out of phase. Waves being out of phase when, when the highs of some of them kind of match up with the lows of the other ones, they're out of phase. Whereas uh, when their highs and lows are together, they're in phase. Now, as we saw earlier, if you replace x with x plus something, positive number here, that shifts to the left. It shifts the opposite direction to what you might expect. And if you make this a negative number, it shifts it to the right. Now, the thing with this is it's hard to track where it's gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to track this point. When we talk about phase shift, we need to track this, what would have been the starting point. So we're going to put a little dot, a green dot here at the starting point and follow that. So now as we change this, when we make this a negative number, that whole thing is going to shift to the right. So if we put in, stop at some number like this at minus 5, that entire graph has shifted 5 units to the right. Like that point that was at the beginning is now here. So we think of our new sort of start point as right there at 5. You know, it's hard to tell on this scale that that's 5, but that would be 5. And then when we shift over the other way here, we put in a positive number, that usual sign starting point of middle on the way up is now at negative 2.4. Again, hard to tell with that pi scale, but that's what it would be. Now, if this was a cosine curve, if we put in here cosine, and of course the shape is what you expect where it starts at a top point instead of the middle on the way up. And if we make this a 
cosine curve. And of course, since this is zero, it matches up with it there. And then we need, a, we need our green dot to be up at the top there. So we'll switch that around. There we go, we're gonna follow that now. Shift to the right. With a negative number, that point shifts. So if you stop at negative four, that top point that was our original starting point in the middle is now right here. That's the starting point. And you put a positive number in there, you stop, this point is shifted two units that way. So you kind of visualize that that is the start point. All right. So that's kind of a visual introduction to phase shift in sine and cosine functions. We're going to summarize some of that info and do a few examples right now. All right, so when you change sine x or cos x to sine x plus c or cos x plus c, you get a horizontal translation or shift to the right if c is less than zero and to the left if c is greater than zero. So just note that that's the opposite of what you might think. The negative value goes in the positive direction and the positive value goes in the negative direction. So we will graph a few different functions here. This first one, y equals two sine x minus pi plus one. First thing to notice is this minus pi, the phase shift of pi to the right. And then we also should notice that our amplitude is two, that a value of two. We also have a vertical shift of one up. And since this is a one in front there, the period is just the usual two pi. We'll first deal with the vertical displacement and go up one unit and draw a dotted line for where that center line is gonna be. Then we'll use the amplitude and know that we're gonna be two up and two down from there. Draw another line for the maximum and the minimum. And then realize that we have a phase shift of pi to the right. So the pi to the right takes us to there. And we can put a vertical dotted line there just so we know that that's our starting point as we would have started at the y-axis. Now the fact that this is a sine curve means that it's going to start in the middle on the way up. And so then we have that point and the period is 2 pi, which is going to take us to there. We know it's going to be in the middle there again. We know halfway in between those two it'll also be in the middle. Halfway in between the first two it'll be at the top. Halfway in between those second two it'll be in the bottom. And then can kind of complete the pattern like that and then draw a curve through those guide points and you have your function y equals 2 sine x minus pi plus 1. We'll do another one here y equals cos 2 x plus pi over 3 minus 3. We have a phase shift of pi over 3 to the left is the first thing to notice there. So we have to think about the 6 squares is pi so a third of that 2 squares is pi over 3 so we're going to move pi over three, two squares to the left, draw a vertical line, dotted line there for what would have been at the axis, the starting point's gonna be there. Some other things to notice here, the minus three in the end means we have a vertical displacement of three down. So we're gonna go three down and then put a center line, dotted line there. There's no number in front, as in there's a one, so the amplitude is one. We, need, we know we're going to need to go up one and down one from there, so we'll do two more dotted lines for the max and the min. We have a two in front in here as a b value, so the period ends up being two pi over two, or pi. And then we have to realize that this is a cosine curve. So cosine starts at a maximum point. So right at that phase shift, it's going to be at a maximum point. And then our period of pi later, it's going to be back at a maximum point. And every pi, it's going to be at the top. And then we know that halfway in between each of those maximums, there's a minimum, so we'll put the minimums in. And then halfway in between each of those maxes and mins, it's gonna be in the middle. And then we can just draw the curve through those guide points, and there you have that function, y equals cos two x plus three minus three. We'll graph one more function here. y equals six sine two pi over eight x minus five. The period of this, with that b value of two pi over eight, is eight period is just 8. We also have an amplitude of 6 with that a value. Now we should notice that there's no number in the end here, so there's no vertical displacement. So we know that this function is just going to be 6 up and 6 down from there. The minimum of negative 6 and maximum of 6. Also we notice that there's a x minus 5 instead of just an x, so it's got a phase shift of 5 to the right. So we can draw a dotted line that's five to the right here to indicate that that's where our function where we're going to start drawing it. Just to fill this in, 
domain of all real numbers and range of y is greater than or equal to negative 6, less than or equal to 6. We can do a line for our maximum and minimum there. Now we should realize that it's a sine function, so that it's going to start in the middle. We know the period is 8, so it's going to be 8 later in the middle again. Halfway in between those two, it's in the middle. Halfway between the first two, it's at the top. Second two, at the bottom. And then we can complete that pattern. And then draw a curve through that whole thing, and you have that function there. Now the last thing we're going to do is look at writing a cosine equation to represent that same function. Now that was a sine equation that we had so we graphed it from a middle point on the way up but if that was a cosine curve one of these top points, one of these maximums would be the starting point. So let's think first about if this were the starting point for that graph how would the equation be different? Well it would still be y equals 6 but it would be cos. That b value would still be 2 pi over 8. The only difference would be this, the phase shift. And from the graph that point is 1 to the left, so we're going to put x plus 1 in our equation. Or we could actually write this same equation, but with a different phase shift, if we had used this point as our start point of 7 to the right. So we put x minus 7 in there. Or we could actually use this point as well and say that it was 15 to the right. So we could put minus 15 is with there as well. Lots of possible equations there, but the only difference between any of them is the phase shift. Alright, so that is a look at phase shift in sine and cosine functions.